Hi, hello, and welcome to According to Ease, the podcast, where we're going to have candid conversation with the hopes of finding a way forward in community. See, we exist and experience life at the intersection of our complex identities and our socio-cultural and political systems. And let's be real, the only way to dismantle it all is to start by dissecting it. So get cozy, get comfy, and let's dive in. What up, what up, what up, and welcome to another episode of According to Ease, the podcast. Today, I am super thrilled to have our guest on. Okay, and I'm, uh, so I do this thing where they're not going to know who you are until I tell them. I'm thrilled for two reasons. One, on a personal level, this lovely human, y'all all know I lost my Noxy baby a week ago today, and we were supposed to record literally right after I had gotten the news and I showed up for our recording session a whole hot mess because you know part the athlete in me really was like keep it pushing like drive determination like you got this and I thought I was okay and then I showed up and they were like how are you and I just lost my shit and was like I can't do this and so that always means so much to me when people can really just see your own humanity and like be humans themselves. And this is also somebody I had already rescheduled on because I lost internet. So on a personal note, I I just think that this this person is a wonderful human. And on a, I guess it's still personal because I only have people on here that I think are dope. (laughs) On another personal note, but for what this human does, I, as y'all know, you know, the work that I do is not just about, you know, black liberation or brown liberation or, you know, any particular liberation. It's about really dismantling, you know, white supremacist, post-colonial settler society, if you will. And of course, that includes our indigenous brothers and sisters. And so y'all will see me repost, you know, and I've, I've posted about how Thanksgiving is some trash and how Columbus is not, <laughs> don't actually don't even get me started. Right. Cause we don't even acknowledge him. And I appreciate that y'all have questions and, and you quote unquote, look to me. And I had a moment and I said, this is not my pain, right? This is the pain of my indigenous siblings And so it was really important to me to make sure that we remember, we always center those closest to the pain. So it was important to me to bring on somebody who is in this work, who holds this identity and who who can really talk to us about the importance of understanding all of these big words that people like to throw around, but don't really seem to know what they mean, like land back and rematriation and land tax and, you know, so many other things that we'll get into. So that being said, That's why I'm also just very excited that you're here because this is a really important conversation. I feel very strongly about it. And uh, who better than Nishoni, a.k.a. Nas? Do you have other nicknames? Um, I have a lot. I have. (laughs) My friend calls me Baba Black Sheep. I'm called Nabu. I feel like there's a whole story there. uh, My first name is Ba Nishoni, so people call me Baba. They call me Ba. Oh my and god, that's so cute. Sometimes I love they, it. Ba, 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 yeah. Do you have any wool? <laughs> um, I'm not telling you. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't come for my wool. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, Nas, thank you so much for being here. That was like a whole long introduction as to like, I also like really fuck with what like y'all are doing overall. Also super biased. You're in the Bay. <laughs> I'm in the Bay, <laughs> but, you know, so clearly. But in this moment, because they know that they can go, you know, they're going to read the show notes and they're going to have access Mm -hmm. to like all the like very formalized links and things like that. But in this moment, what do you want to tell the people about you before we hop into the conversation? Well, so I work for Security Land Trust and part of my role is being on the land. And also I do a little bit of office work. So part of that office work is uh, speaking engagements, interviews. I've been fortunate to speak on behalf of the organization, which is really awesome. And, you know, tell my story as a part of that and just learn as I'm speaking with people as well. Um, learn more about this land, learn more about its um, original people. And the land work itself is also very fulfilling just to be in places that are grounding in places that are healing spaces. And yeah, we're doing all types of stuff. So my role is a little, it's like, 
all over the place, but I also love the fact that I could plant and I can go weed and harvest, but I could also construct something or just like have a conversation or um, provide access to things for other people. That's super dope. I think that's a good context. So I want to take us back. We're going to pretend that Weez doesn't know. I don't know anything. Okay. So you're going to hopefully talk to me like you don't know that I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So don't be surprised if I ask you questions. You're like, why is she asking me this annoying ass question? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I see a lot in my work is, and obviously if you don't see this, let me know, but I'm going to say, I'm going to wager that the way that whiteness works, you do is a lot of folks who want to get involved, a lot of folks who are really well-intentioned. And so they'll do the piece that either feels easy or that signals performance. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of stops there. And so what I see a lot is, and I'll see this like on lives, right? Or when I go on live or like when I've even been at, at workshops, um, because one of my practices is to, when I, well, before the panty, when we were like physically in places, um, one of the things that I do to disrupt whiteness is when I'm leading workshops, I make it a point of naming the land that we're occupying, mm-hmm. the tribes who are it, like whose land it was, mm-hmm. uh, or rather is, mm-hmm. and uh, what local orgs, depending on where I am, that like folks can tap in mm-hmm. with to like, actually get actionable right Mm -hmm. and so part of it I realized is like my fault and I have to take responsibility for it because I modeled that behavior but folks just stop at the first part right so like in the bay they'll be like yeah I'm on a lonely land and I'm like cool check (laughs) yeah but I gave you orgs right or I I told you to go check out xyz Mm -hmm. but it didn't get there Mm -hmm. and so I really want this to be a conversation for folks where they can understand what going past the naming of and the performance of can look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before we get into like the real juicy stuff of right land tax and rematriation and all that, can we frame for people like what does one support and listening to folks, I always say listen to folks closer to the pain, right? So right now we're talking about indigenous Mm -hmm. folks. What does going past the, the check mark of naming the land that you are occupying actually look like? Mm-hmm. Well, if you go to our website at segorte-landtrust.org, you can find the engage page. And I also helped make the website. So I'm always telling people go to the website because I'm not going to talk and talk and talk when you can just look it up. <laughs> um, Nat no, said there- Google is free. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. But it for sure is. I don't know. Some people will come up and, you know, that's that's labor on you. If people are like, oh, I did this. And they're like, what do I do next? It's like, I'm not your teacher. I'm not, you know, I didn't sign up to do that. And the fact that there are so many settlers here that have that expectation. It's like, I want to volunteer with you. I want to work with you. Teach me this. Show me how to do this. Mm-hmm. Give me the okay for this. And you haven't even said hello. You haven't even introduced yourselves. You haven't even done don't any even sort name. of. I know. Any reflection. So for me, I think a lot of it starts with education. And Mm. um, so part, you know, that's kind of like the first step by people doing land acknowledgements and saying where they're living and who are the people there and are they still there? What are some of the disadvantages that they're um, that they're living with? Um, Do they not have a land base? Do they have any source of income through a business that the tribe owns or anything like that? Are they even recognized as a tribe? There are some places that are considered um, extinct in, in a really weird way where the people are there, but online sources will say, oh, the tribe doesn't exist anymore because they don't have a visual presence or they don't have right. a, a okay from the government. So Can we la- pause on that? Because yeah. I, I really want to make sure that people understand what you just said and like mm-hmm. how fundamentally fucked up it is. Mm-hmm. Like this is whiteness at its finest. Mm-hmm. White settlers come and colonize a land, mm-hmm. literally forcibly take it, Right. Y'all can go educate yourselves if you don't know what white pilgrims and settlers have done to indigenous folks since the dawn of time. We're not going to do that here. Mm -hmm. You can go to the website. (laughs) No, but so, right, they come, they colonize a land. Mm -hmm. They commit absolute atrocities against an entire people. 
And then fast forward to 2021, they're like, hmm, mm-hmm. you're only real if we also now say you get to be real. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? We've taken everything from you, your land, your way of life, mm-hmm. your communities, your like literally everything. Mm-hmm. But like, you're welcome. <laughs> like, I really want people to grasp how, mm-hmm. how truly diabolical that is. Mm-hmm. Like, those are the I, same. Mm-hmm. Go those ahead. Are the no, same go ahead. people that are saying, pull yourself up by bootstraps, get the American dream, do this, do that. And it's like, you took away everything. You took away the boots. So it's like, how do you expect people to, how do you expect people to, to elevate if you took away everything? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think that's something that people don't recognize too, because I'll see a lot of people sharing quote unquote federal or like resources mm-hmm. of like federally acknowledged tribes. I'm like, do y'all understand what that means by federally acknowledged? Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't mean that to your point, the people are not still there. Mm -hmm. It just means that our government, to whom it does not serve, Mm -hmm. right, to actually acknowledge those people, Mm -hmm. have acknowledged or not. Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm going to say this, if I may, Mm -hmm. a call to action. We're going to do this episode super backwards because I normally do all the calls to action at the end. But a call to action around this is I would really urge everybody who, wherever you live, go past whatever is just like easily, readily Googleable, mm-hmm. and really, and like whatever federally reckon, like really look to see who, who is there? Mm-hmm. Who are you maybe willingly or unknowingly completely ignoring and also participating in their erasure simply because, you know, an easy to find website didn't make it easy to find for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and that's part of the education. So education, that's the first thing people can do. What's, what's the next thing? It's like, we need y'all to get with the shit. What does that look like? I think uh, also like stepping in and interrupting behavior. So we're seeing mm-hmm. protests, you know, sometimes it's even, you know, white folks putting their bodies in front of other people to protect them. So do that physically, but also in conversations. If you see something that's like, okay, this doesn't sit right with me or someone saying something that's just like, okay, nope. Like whether it's a microaggression or blatant racism, like I feel that a lot of it's, you know, our so-called allies jobs to step in to say something. And we're in spaces where they don't, they don't do that. But, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you realize that, you know, okay, this doesn't sound right. Like, something about it and it could be a simple question as why or like why do you think that's the case um so you don't have to really go into proving someone wrong but just like getting them to explain themselves would help as well because they may even see where they messed up I think part of like that education also includes like looking at your own lineage and looking at the privileges that you have and how you got there so you talked about um like you know, what happened during colonization. But if you just take a a neighborhood and you look at like the demographics of it. So for instance, Alameda, like, why is it all white? Like, how did it get there? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, I know everybody from the Bay probably just took a deep breath (laughs) that that knows, right? You're just like, Uh, continue. (laughs) Um, and this is, this is unrelated, but um, there's a, a neighborhood in, in upstate New York that is has a very huge Italian and Polish population. Mm-hmm. And there was a point where it was flipped, where there was more Polish people than Italian people. And now it's more Italian. And you keep going back and keep going back through all these immigrations and like generations of people. And like you'll see how the you know, based off of race and ethnicity, how it changes. And it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, now you just have a statue for Native people and you only talk about these white people. Who else was here? Like, Yeah. So so so, you mean the statue, the statue's not enough? Like we should be doing more? little plaques. Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Um, So like naming parks after the tribe, that's not, that's not, okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Yes. So I think, I don't know, people want a pat on the back. They're like, I did this, I did that. No, Mm -hmm. no. Congratulate me. You don't, you don't deserve a pat on the back. You don't deserve congratulations. You're doing, you're fixing something that your, you know, your ancestors did and you're also benefiting to the state. So. (laughs) Oh, they, they know. I tell my, my Mm -hmm. motto and phrase is Mm -hmm. I don't give out gold stars and cookies for you doing Mm -hmm. what you are supposed to do. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I'm not giving you a pat on the back for doing the right thing, the human mm -hmm. thing. No. Mm -hmm. Now, if you throw yourself in front of a police officer who is, you know, probably two seconds away from murdering a black or brown person, I might give you a hug. In those situations, like, for sure. But, mm -hmm. like, the everyday basic humanity, mm -hmm. no, I'm not giving mm -hmm. it to you. So don't worry, they, they know. Okay, okay. <laughs> They're gonna know. No. <laughs> How will they know? <laughs> One of the things I really want to name here just for the listeners is to pay attention to how no matter who I bring on this show, no matter, or, or on Instagram or, you know, whatever, no matter our identities, how we're marginalized, it's literally always the same thing. It's educate yourself, mm -hmm. use your privilege, stop expecting free emotional, intellectual, mm -hmm. physical labor from us, mm -hmm. and do better, fix the thing Right. <laughs> and then, oh, we gonna get to that. <laughs> you know, fix, fix it, fix it. It's not our responsibility to fix the system that to your point, your ancestors built mm -hmm. to benefit you that you are still benefiting from. You might mm -hmm. not have built it, but you're certainly reaping all of the benefits and rewards. Mm -hmm. So we can show you the path, but you still have to walk it. Mm -hmm. Like you have to do it at the end of the day, right? We can give you, we can say, look, you need epoxy and whatever, hammers and nails and all the things. We can point out the things that you need to build the house, but like you have to build the house. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna build it for you. I like that you thought of epoxy first. <laughs> I know, right? I, I had a moment where I was like, people are gonna be like, what? Like, what are you making? She, right, exactly, <laughs> like, what are you making? You didn't Art. go for like brick, uh -huh. mortar, cement, wood, nothing. Uh -huh. No foundational epoxy. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I just moved and I'm like doing some things in my in my apartment. And nice. so I've been thinking about epoxy and super glue. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's probably where, where it came Fun from. Stuff. But anyways, <laughs> not the point. <laughs> so that's OK. So we have a really, really clear understanding of, of that. Basically, everything that any other marginalized identity has ever told you is the way to use your identity privilege. Mm -hmm is the same across the board. And this goes for melanated folks too. I think one of the things that I personally get really frustrated with is we've allowed whiteness to infiltrate even the ways that we engage with each other. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like, oh, you know, rematriation, land back, like the indigenous fight, that's not my fight. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've got things that I'm supposed to be worrying about, mm -hmm. right? Or like, oh, you know, Asian elders are, are being attacked in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. That's not my problem. Like I'm not Asian. No, it's all of our problem because mm -hmm. all of it, the root of all of it is, is white supremacy. So mm -hmm. this is also, you know, a call for the melanated listeners. Like we, it is more so our responsibility to support and help and amplify each other mm -hmm. in solidarity and unity because we know that pain. Right. We we literally live it. We know what it is. And so it might be for different reasons and different identities. But when you get it in your bones, like how can you not support mm -hmm. or amplify? Right. Or like stand in unity and solidarity with folks who are who also like live it and know it and feel it in their bones. So mm -hmm. I want to make that make that clear. This is not just for our white folks. White folks, mm -hmm. you have a different responsibility. You all got more of a responsibility. But this is for everybody. Mm -hmm. OK. I, on this vein, mm -hmm. so, and I said this before we started recording, so I'm just going to say it again. One of the things that I really want to talk about, and I'm, by I say me, I want you to talk about for the people, <laughs> is this idea of, you know, the, um, we're going to call them the hashtags, right? I see hashtags all the time, land back, land tax, and rematriation. Mm -hmm. And I see people using the hashtags and I'm like, I don't even know if you know what that means. You're just using the hashtag because you reposted something and like maybe you just want followers and visibility. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. No knock on that. But let's make sure we know what we're talking about. One or two, the other side of it, you know, it's kind of like the performance like, oh, but I said it. I used the right hashtag like I did the thing. Mm -hmm. So that's one. The other flip side of it is that I see a lot of folks who have apparently no problem with the idea of reparations and can conceptually understand why reparations for, you know, black folks in mm -hmm. the United States 
totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. But somehow the notion of like, oh, I don't know, giving land back to mm-hmm. the indigenous folks to whom it belonged is like so foreign. Like they don't mm-hmm. quite understand that. Mm-hmm. So let's just start there because I have more, mm-hmm. more things to unpack. But so talk to us a little bit about these concepts. So yeah, so we have a a land tax that we implement. It's a voluntary land tax based off of what people are able to give. So really calling on the people that are in a place of privilege, um, whether that's their wealth or just, you know, their skin privilege as a white person. And it's based, it's calculated based off of, you know, how much you're making, how much you're paying in mortgage or your rent. So considering all those things. And really that allows us to, to pay for our, our supplies and our, our programming that we do. So in another way, like it's another form of a reparation. Um, and as far as land back, it's like without a land base, there are a lot of tribes that aren't able to practice their traditions. Um, I think it was until, wasn't until like the late seventies that like native traditions in the U S were legal to practice because before you're persecuted by um, you know, Spanish colonization, American set, or white settlers and even um, other like armies. So um, being able to practice those traditions is another thing that's important and also enabled when you have the land. And a big part of our work is also growing medicine. So growing things that are not only used in ceremony, but we process them and we give them to people, things like elderberry syrup or tobacco, which is, is an offering that you can give to a fire or you can give it to someone as a gift. So without the land, it's like we can't grow these foods. And without mm-hmm. the food, we can't make sure that we're combating, you know, the, the food justice problems we have in areas like Oakland or the Greater Bay Area. So a lot of it is making sure that we're able to, as Karina says, um, put indigenous land into indigenous hands because, you know, for the lonely people here, like these are the people that have held on to that ancestral knowledge and their ancestors are the one that took care of this place, that did cultural burns, that harvested, you know, what they needed and didn't take more than that. And they planted thinking of the deer and the other animals and other things out there that needed to eat as well. So this like sort of reciprocal relationship with the earth that we don't see with you know, modern farming today or this mm-hmm. like industrialization we see around the world. And it's so important that we return that land to its original people because they're the ones that are going to make sure that we have more time on this earth. So yeah, that land back is important for those reasons so that we can heal the earth and rematriate it, return it to what it was before, before all of these atrocities happened on it. And another thing that we've, we've talked about in doing our work with rematriation is the fact that if you go back 200 years ago to when the Ohlone people were here and thriving and in their villages before contact and before their enslavement, there were no, you know, we didn't have problems like homelessness. We didn't have problems mm-hmm. around police brutality. It's like we didn't, we didn't have these, obviously the police wasn't there, but it's like we didn't have these issues, like things were handled in a good way. And there was that connection with the earth. So we weren't continuously taking and taking and extracting. Um, we were in this um, regenerative relationship with the earth. So the idea that if we can give more land to the lonely people through this land trust and the tribal representation, that that will provide more food for our communities and you know for everyone, because a lot of our work involves calling everyone to do this work, providing you know housing, providing job security, and just like getting rid of all of those things that plague our communities today. Yeah. I really, really want to make sure that people understand what you just said. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do that like teacher thing where I'm like, this so tell is what me I how. Say. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's really important for two reasons. One is mm-hmm. one of the things that I hear a lot of times, like, of course, it's people who are committed to their own ignorance, right? And misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. But the the response of like oh so what i'm just supposed to move out of my house and give up everything and like give yes. it to no. you know <laughs> exactly so do, no. do that <laughs> run me your house uh-huh. right? <laughs> but like i think what you said is really important and people miss that right it's not about saying you have to give up your home and like you can't live here and we can't coexist together mm-hmm. it's about saying 
you're benefiting off of stolen land. You're living mm -hmm. off of stolen land and the folks who have the relationship with the land and know how to truly properly care for not just the land, but to your point, like the entire ecosystem, you need to run them their money, mm -hmm. one, so that, and, and not so that it's just like, give me money, right? So that really like tribes can do the, plant their medicine, grow mm -hmm. their food, take care of themselves and right, the, the surrounding area. So it's not about, you know, giving everything up and like sacrificing everything. It's mm -hmm. about this idea of, it's a sharing, right? It's a mm -hmm. communal sharing for the benefit of everybody. What's the first thing? There is so much land that is even just like either government owned or especially in the Bay Area, we have so many foreign entities that have just been buying up land mm -hmm. that could very easily be given mm -hmm. to indigenous tribes and not just in the Bay. This is across, right, the United States and Canada. I'm talking to you too. Canadians like to pretend they don't have racism. Yeah, true <laughs> <laughs> right like don't even get me started on the treatment of first nations people okay but <laughs> let me bring it back like we're sorry so, check no <laughs> right <laughs> exactly our bad we're done so that's the first thing is it's 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 about a, a reciprocal communal sharing right so the idea of the land tax the shimi land tax the idea of you know land back is not about like what do i do move back mm -hmm. to somewhere in europe no no yep. one is telling you to do that. i'm kidding <laughs> Nas is like yeah i have different land. views <laughs> <laughs> well so but we can talk about it right like uh-huh so, oh that's my yeah. hot take then no. <laughs> anyways go ahead go ahead Nas is, end of episode Nas said please return from whence you came unless you were forcibly brought here because mm -hmm. then we could coexist we didn't ask to come anyways yeah that's our whole episode okay great no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but so here's the thing, right? We can want that. There's a lot of things that I want from white people that are not going to happen. <laughs> and if you can do that, great. But mm -hmm. if you can't, there's a difference between being an immigrant to a land and joining the ecosystem in the way it exists and honoring existing systems of the mm -hmm. people that are indigenous to that place mm -hmm. and coming and colonizing and settling, mm -hmm. right? So my thing is always, it's the same way I feel about gentrification. I'm like, you are welcome so long as you, are, you understand you're joining an ecosystem, mm -hmm. that there is a way of life and a people and a culture and mm -hmm. practices that already exist. Hello, mm -hmm. Oakland and West Oakland specifically, yeah. right? I don't think they're gonna make it into the East. They're too scary for that. They're going to stop it. You'd like, be surprised. You'd be surprised. Oh, really? Just go on Trulia, look up 98, look up, you'd be surprised. There's a I lot thought of it like stopped it. You think that, you think they're going to go all the way to 98? I'd be, Just I don't sprinkled know. in just a little bit. Oh yeah. But they're, I don't think they're sprinkle. not going to, you think they'll get a, like a Whole Foods <laughs> on like 98th no, and Cherry? No, Probably not. that would just give too much to us. That would just, <laughs> they'd exactly. be like, oh, you have healthy food now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Now we don't need to do anything else. Anyways, no, but so, right, like, if you're going to join that ecosystem, learn what you're joining, mm -hmm. right? Like, take a back seat. This is the same concept. I have a concept that I, that I use because I'm a theater nerd, right? It's the mm -hmm. all the world's a stage. It's a whole metaphor. Y'all can go watch it on IG if you haven't yet. But the idea here is, right, center those that either are closest to the pain and or are the indigenous people of that area mm -hmm. and ask them not teach me how to support you, but how can I support? How do we behave here? How do we engage here? Let me follow your lead. Mm -hmm. This is the exact same thing. That is what this idea is because here's my second point. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to talk about this specifically just a little bit. In California, we continue to have raging fucking fires mm -hmm. that continue to devastate property and people. Mm -hmm. And the last one that we had, because I too am a sarcastic smart ass, I made a comment on Instagram that folks that are really truly rooted in colonial settler ideologies mm -hmm. had a brain meltdown over that said, huh, if we had just <laughs> given the land back to the indigenous tribes of California, mm -hmm who know how to treat the land and do preemptive burnings, maybe we wouldn't be here. 
-hmm. And then Newsom after that was like, maybe we're going to start doing. And I was like, oh, no, the fuck you did not. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So I said that Mm -hmm. and people lost their minds. Literally their brains melted. They Mm -hmm. could not conceptualize how giving the land back to the people Mm -hmm. and allowing the indigenous tribes to care for the land, like basically following the lead, Mm -hmm. right? Could actually be a solution Mm -hmm. to to the fires. And I would love for us to be able to use this example. Also, full transparency, because I'm a little petty. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just like want to make the point for those that were really upset. People were upset mm-hmm. at this notion. And I, so I can only imagine how people interact with you when you, when you talk about land back. If like I just made the smart, smart ass comment. So can you talk to us a little bit about how, for example, giving land back right? Mm -hmm. And rematriating the land would solve a lot of these problems that we currently have. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for the cultural burns and some of, I I mentioned the the Ohlone, which we have several tribal members in our organization, Mm -hmm. um, but there are also, there are so many different tribes. Um, Mm -hmm. There's like Miwok and then Miwok is also broken up into like Bay, Coastal, Pomo, all all sorts of tribe. And then within the Ohlone people, they're also if you will, like bands or like groups of them. Mm-hmm. So they have different languages, they have different customs. Some things may be shared, others just completely different. So I remember, I think it was a, a Pomo elder. I went to this workshop with different like native leaders and um, we were learning about the cultural burns. And basically the way that they're done is in like sections. So you like kind of plan everything out. And you're like, okay, this this little square right here, we're gonna burn first year. This next, we're well, not exactly a little square, but it would be like yeah. acres or so. And then next year, we're gonna burn this one, and then we keep going. And the idea is that like you're planning for the future. So there's another um, another belief in like a lot of intertribal communities of seven generations. So doing things that have ripple effects, understanding that what you're throwing out today is affecting someone 200 years later. 200 plus years later because it takes forever for things to bow the greed. So the idea that you're doing things in a good way that will benefit your, um, not just your descendants, but like people that you can't even think of or fathom right now. And like with that, it was like, okay, we're going to plant this. And then within one year, the deer are going to have these fresh shoots to be able to eat. And then, you know, they're going to, a part of this ecosystem, they're going to relieve themselves. And, you know, that goes into the earth. And another thing about like certain trees is that they need fire in order to to grow. So like the the oak trees uh, as well as I think yeah just other California native trees and some even invasive species that are here they need that fire in order to grow and to procreate. So it's going to happen regardless. Even if we we think we fix the problem in our modern Western way of doing things, it's it's still going to happen. So unless we um, work you know, with nature and we're kind of like, okay, like, what do you need? Like, it may seem a little crazy to some people, but like go out there and like form a connection with your plants, form a connection with that green space that you have access to. And you don't have to exactly ask the tree, like, Hey, what do you need? But like, you can look at it and just be like, Hmm, this is kind of yellow or there's some holes in it. Um, the soil looks really dry and then, you know, do, do your own research um, so like kind of having those relationships with nature are super important and we receive a lot of that knowledge from indigenous communities because despite colonization and despite like not having things written down, a lot of people have oral traditions, that knowledge was still able to pass down. And even just like having that instinct to like look at your surroundings and say, okay, I need to water this, this needs more sun. So I think, you know, a lot of a lot of those problems will be solved through the leadership of indigenous leaders like and tribal leaders out here that have experiences with cultural burns that have experiences with harvesting or hunting specific animals and and plants. So that way things aren't overgrown or um, they're more predator than prey or vice versa. So, yeah, I think a lot of it is just like listening and observing and taking in and learning, which is something that our tribes here have a lot of experience with. Yeah. I'm also hearing, which is fun, fundamentally challenged the way that white supremacist ideology and culture works, but it's also about really not only being in community with people, it's about being in community with nature. 
mm-hmm. and having a really like symbiotic reciprocal relationship, mm-hmm. right? Because if you give to it, it will give to you versus mm-hmm. take, 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 take. Mm-hmm. And it's about a mindful a level of mindfulness and not just to nature, but to to your point, like the generations to come that you can't even necessarily fathom, but it's doing your part right now to take care of the earth and each other in the ways that we can and set the next generations up to win. Mm -hmm. That is so foreign. That challenges every part, right? Like just the idea of reciprocity and community, Mm -hmm. right? This idea that like, it's not just about the individual, like fundamentally challenges the way that, you know, white supremacist ideology and post-colonial settler society works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of me also wonders how much of it is just like in the education piece, you know, getting folks who are so deeply socialized into post-colonial settler white supremacist society to really start to challenge the ways that they look at, like, what is community? What Mm -hmm. is my relationship to nature? What is my relationship to my descendants? To people I don't even know, to people's, to other people's kids that I'll never know, or great, mm-hmm. great, 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 whatever's, mm-hmm. right? Like the hundreds of years to come. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that's really hard for people to stop and think about because we spend so much time. We've been taught to think about yourself and your own success and like take what you want and, you know, no one's going to give it to you. Like all of these really aggressive mentalities mm-hmm. that don't do the individual or the community any good. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think something that that I heard you say again that I really want it to land on listeners, right? Even though I like jokingly said like this is petty and like I want to make sure that people understand the point I was trying to make Mm -hmm. is is really this, right? Like right now we when we have these fires that are devastating California, it's not just Mm -hmm. happening in California, right? It happened Mm -hmm. in Colorado and so on and so forth. But we're in the Bay, we're in Oakland. So this is our literal backyard we're living the actual impact and ramification of the ways in which colonial settler society has erased Mm -hmm. indigenous folks, indigenous ways, indigenous practices, Mm -hmm. right? If that is not enough to get somebody to say, huh, maybe this isn't working. Maybe Mm -hmm. I should do my part to ensure that we're putting the land and entrusting the land, right? Like in the hands of those that actually know what the hell to do with it. Mm -hmm. Like how else do we move people? I I don't have an answer to that. That's just like a, you know, maybe something for for people to think about. Mm -hmm. It's like we have a solution. That's, this is how I feel. Things keep getting burned down. Horrible things are happening to the planet. We have a solution, but because it decenters whiteness, people are like, nah, I don't really like that one. Like, there's literally a solution right here. I just let the earth do its thing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> I mean, listen, she gonna do what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. This is the other thing I keep telling people. I'm gonna play with her if you want to. Mm-hmm. She's gonna be like, oh, what was that? Oh. <laughs> a little wind. Here's a pandemic. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. pandemics don't just come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so obviously we're going to make sure that, you know, everybody has access to the website and mm-hmm. the come correct document and, you know, the information on the the land tax. But is there anything else that when you're like, I really wish folks knew this or I mm-hmm. w- really wish folks understood this? Is there anything else that you want to leave with the people uh, like around those things? Another another thing that came up for me is um, asking permission. So when you talked mm. about, well, two things actually, like when you talked about asking what you can do, recognizing that not everyone has the capacity or will want to do that for you. So don't just be like, oh, hey, like, can you teach me your ways? And, you know, all this and this. So it's like, go to the people that have volunteered to do that or that are in that work and, and compensate them and pay them for their, for their labor on the Can other end. Can you repeat it, that part just mm-hmm. in case pay they them their money. <laughs> <laughs> pay people for their labor, especially if they're doing a work to help you heal from your whiteness. Uh, <laughs> so the other thing is asking permission. So in a part, a part of that, you know, when you're going out to learn something and asking someone like, can you teach me this or, you know, all of that 
also like applying that to other parts of your life. So if you are, if you are harvesting something like asking permission of the plant Mm. and to people, this can be different things. Some people may offer a prayer. Some people may bring something in return. Others may just be like, Hey, Mr. Plant. Hey, plant. Can I, can I take a little bit off here? And like some people like to talk to their plants and build a relationship. So there's, again, it's reciprocal and you're, you're giving something back. So applying that same thing when you're asking someone like to, to do labor for you, or I see, I've seen this a lot recently, which is something I'm not used to, but I'm really glad that it's happening, especially for uh, my nephews, but people are going around and saying like, Hey, can I give you a hug? Mm -hmm. And not just expecting it, not the Mm -hmm. like, where's my hug kind of guy. But people are just like, can I give you a hug? Or like, can I call you this? Or what are your preferred pronouns? Like, we see that asking for permission throughout our life, like throughout our day. And we just have to like, make sure that we continue to to do that. And, you know, we are, I'm sure our grandparents, depending on who they were, they they taught us how to say may I and please and all of that. So it's like bringing that back into and not just being extractive or not just being like, can I have this? Or, Ooh, that looks nice. Give me that. Or, um, so tell me how this one time. So really asking permission. Um, and that is like a big thing in something that we've called how to come correct, which is also on the website. And it has a little bit more guidelines and, and guidance for people that are wondering like, how can I contribute and what can I do? So that way you're going about it in the right way and you're um, in good relationship. Yeah. I think this is super important. This gets to this this idea that I call it's like global consent mm-hmm. that, you know, we've really kind of taken this idea of consent and permission to just mean something within a very specific binary of like sexual relationships. But like mm-hmm. it's so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think to your point, especially around plants, because we don't view we don't respect plants, we don't mm-hmm. even respect animals. And they don't communicate in the ways that we want them to communicate or that we understand in our language and we haven't taken the time to understand how they communicate. We just Mm -hmm. do what we want and we take from them. Mm -hmm. Right. But this has to be a global thing, like down to like, I even say, you know, so it's one of the things that I say is like, how can I support you? That's the question that we always want to ask. But that's assuming that you've already asked, can I support you? Mm -hmm right? Not everybody's going to want your support. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is I want to add this on because I don't want this to get lost on people. You also don't get to make how a person chooses to engage or not engage with you. And then like comparing that to how they do or don't engage with someone else about Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Right? Because like how many times, you know, do we see like it'll happen where Let's use the example of a hug. You know, maybe Mm -hmm. the nephew totally wants to hug one person, but like doesn't want to hug another person. And then they like make it about them and they feel a kind of way. And then they guilt trip the nephew. And it's like, leave the kid alone. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was hugged out. Maybe Mm -hmm. also, maybe it is about you. Maybe you got bad vibes, like whatever. (laughs) But like you have to reconcile and deal with that on your own. Mm -hmm. Don't make that the responsibility of the person. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, I'll see this a lot too with like folks who have really good intentions and like want to do better and want to get actionable. And they're like, but you know, you let that person support or like you let that person do the thing. And like, I'm just trying to help. And first of all, calm down. Right. (laughs) Decenter yourself. Right. And, and ask instead of yourself, not to the other person, maybe what is it about the way that I'm showing up Mm -hmm. or why am I still making this about me? Why do I feel personally victimized? Why am I taking it so personally that, you know, I can't do this thing or I'm not being accepted or I'm not being invited or whatever, Mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it's about the way you're showing up. Sometimes it's the person that you're asking from is tapped out. Maybe I don't want to deal with privilege and mainstream identity people in that moment. Like, and it has nothing to do with you. But the second that you make it about you, you're centering yourself, you're centering whiteness and you've stopped Mm -hmm. listening to the actual person to whom you are trying to enter into community and relationship with. And I think that is so important. That's like really, for me, that's the second piece around permission. It's Mm -hmm. like, what do you do after whether you've gotten it or not? Mm -hmm. You know, and like, did you, if you've gotten it, are you still honoring it? Are you listening? Are you still listening? Or are you now like, oh, I have permission. So I'm going to assume now I can make all these assumptions and just like show up and Mm -hmm. how I think is best or whatever. So I really want people to check out the come correct document. I think it's awesome. 
thank you so much for being here. I'm like, I think we've said all the things. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. I really want specific call to action for everybody. Just obviously check out all the links that we're going to provide. But again, refer back to what I said in the beginning of the episode. Y'all's calls to action, y'all's call to action is I want you wherever you live, because we have people like globally, right? Mm -hmm. That listen to the show. Amazing. I love y'all. Shout out to, to all of our listeners. Find out not just whose land you occupy. Mm -hmm. Who is physically there? Who is still present? How can you support them? Do they have a land tax? Do they mm -hmm. have, biz, to your point, do they have businesses? Do they already have land? Do they have, you know, ownership of any of that land? Are they fighting to get ownership of any land? Maybe you're a lawyer. Maybe you just have time to write letters. Like whatever the thing is, find out what the actual people whose land you are currently a settler on and occupying mm -hmm. are doing how you can support and how you can go past the checkpoint of every time you show up in a space, just doing a land and tribal acknowledgement. Cause it's not enough to just say like, yeah, I know whose land I'm on. What are you doing beyond that? Mm -hmm. And so I really want y'all to, that's your homework. Go find out, go find out those things. And you don't have to do it for anyone else, but you, no one's grading it. We're not going to know, but I think it's, it's super important that y'all take it one step further uh, in if the goal is to dismantle white supremacy as a whole, this is just as much a part of it as you showing up in the streets for Black Lives Matter. So you got anything else for the people? Nope. You said no. It all. <laughs> all right, y'all. Well, thank you so much. And uh, that's all I got. All right, y'all. Until next time. Bye. All right, y'all. That's all I got. But don't forget your action items. One. Join me on Podia, where you can get access to tons of BTS content, including a very special Air interview with all of our guests. Two, rate, review, especially a written review. Subscribe, like, and share this podcast with all of your peoples. Three, if you aren't already, go peep me on IG. Follow me there. And, you know, most importantly, keep coming back. All right, until next time. Toodles!